Uh, I was wondering uh, how, uh, if you were uh, old enough to be around when the Beatles came out on Ed Sullivan and what sort of impression that made on you guys personally, if it, you know, it meant a lot to me, and I know Jody's a bit of a Beatles fan, and uh, so that's my question. Well, I remember uh, the day that they were supposed to be on uh, Ed Sullivan, um, my brother's band practiced at the house, you know, and, and they, my mom made some coffee, everybody had something to eat. They was coming around, and I was like, man, I want to watch Ed Sullivan, you know, and uh, but everybody else in the room wanted to watch roller derby. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to keep going back and forth, moving the TV back. Uh, oh, there they are, so I got these, hear a song and then put it back in roller derby. But yeah, I, I remember that day. It had, it had the impact on me too. Um, let me see. Uh, I think I slept through the Ed Sullivan part of it, but I like the Beatles. You know, <laughs> um, and you jammed with Yoko and Sean. And well, you know, yeah, that was a bit later, though. That was long <laughs> after the Ed Sullivan phase. But I keep leaving three or four decade gaps for you. Yeah, you know, I mean, I quit my career as a bebopper after I heard the Beatles. I knew it was all over. <laughs> I don't know, I was how old? Was it, Eleven. You know. <laughs> no. Well, I, you two are wonderful musicians. I love your work. I've, I've bought a lot of your CDs. I have a strange question for Mark. Um, I saw you with T-Bone Burnett in Santa Barbara a few years ago, oh, yeah, yeah. and I got to talk to you, and it was inspiring. But then I was um, talking about how great I thought you played, and um, to a sound engineer at Soho, a little small club. And this is a strange question, but he said, yeah, I remember a night he played here, and that night, um, he was kind of being experimental, and uh, a lot of the crowd left, and he said that before you ended, they all left. So I, I, I know that won't happen to you now, but uh, how would, do you remember that? And if that, would that, how does an audience affect your feelings, um, you know, in different towns, and if they leave or walk away, or? Well, usually they don't all leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did that night, the sound engineer told me that you, you were in a strange mood, and you, I wouldn't leave. you may be, Provoked it maybe, perhaps. <laughs> That's what he called me in Santa Barbara. So, oh, well, maybe he was about bad sound person. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody always blames the guitarist. I think it's because the other instruments aren't loud enough. <laughs> it's not our fault. <laughs> One more question. This is kind of a punk rock question for Mark. Um, I'm just curious about if there's any influence in British music or British punk in your kind of aesthetic and how punk and whatever has, has affected you as a musician. Well, um, I mean, I listened to the same bands everybody else did, you know, in the late 70s and, and early 80s, but I, I don't hear punk I mean, my, the punk bands that I kind of first became interested in and first heard were not Brit punk bands, and I, I see the origins of punk as the, as well as Iggy Pop, as the Ramones, um, as, uh, as Richard Hell and the Voidoids in, in particular, um, you know, I mean, it's historically true that the Voidoids went over to England and the next played a gig in London and the next day Malcolm McLaren went out and founded the set and started to look for people to be in the Sex Pistols. So I, I don't see punk as being a Brit phenomenon. I see it as being a, uh, well, kind of an American phenomenon first. And, um, and also I don't see the, I see a lot of, I see the borders of punk as being a lot more amorphous than um, than a lot of people might think. I mean, Robert Quine, who played that gig uh, with Richard Hell and the Voidoids that gave um, Malcolm McLaren the idea for British punk. Um, I have some Albert Eiler tapes that were given to me by Robert Quine, 
So, you know, I'm, he was listening to a lot of things. Um, and, and I see punk as part of a continuum of, uh, of music that rocks the house. And then in California, at the same time when Los Lobos was coming up, what were some of the punk bands that were coming out there that were your peers? Well, it was, uh, uh, there, was there was a lot of Chicano uh, musicians involved in, the, in the, the punk movement and the thing was going on. And so it, it started to come across in East LA and play, I mean, they'd set up a, a gig and it would get busted and they'd find another hall to do it. It was all really underground the way it's supposed to be. You know, and uh, but um, but you know there was uh, there was the punk thing going on, and it was all and that opened up like you know the, the t traditional kind of you know rock and roll, you know rock and roll things like that. You know, uh, you know the Blasters, X, um, Circle Jerks, um, Fear. Uh, those are all you know the Plugs. You know, Dito, Dito lives here now. Right, brother. And uh, you know, the, those are Tito's the one that got us on the the, the public image game because he was the the plugs were playing. Uh, it was in uh, what year was it? 1980 maybe. It was a uh, uh, the Six Pistols never made it to to the West Coast with their tour that they did of the states. So all these people were waiting for you know John Lydon to come back. So they were like, yeah, they were like on and on fire for this. So this band called 45 Grave uh, backs out of the gig. And uh, so Pito, who's, the plugs were on the bill, he says, hey man, this calls was, was Lobos to come play. <laughs> and we were still playing traditionally, we had to be that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, man, they let us have it, man. We, I mean, they did spit on coins. And, they were trying to make coins and said to get the wrong. And, uh, you know, but, you know, but it was like, that was my introduction to punk rock, you know? And, and you know, I look over, Louis got a big loogie hanging with his. Yeah, you know, throwing full. When the bottle started to come, that's when we got off. I think it lasted maybe 20 minutes, you know? But that was, uh, but it was a, exhilarating, you know? We got, fuck, hey, man. You know, you know, you're right, fuck somebody, you know? You know what? Break a card. <laughs> they don't spit on you because they light you. <laughs> but, but while we're talking about punk rock, I know we gotta go, but I just wanna, you know, in terms of borders here and, and you know, punk rock, I wanna read a lyric. Despicable filthy rodent. Oh no, sorry, filthy rodent, despicable animal, scum of humanity, deformed monstrosity, subhuman specter of hell. A cursed worm, how much damage have you done? Me. Parasite, poison snake, wretched refuge, ref wretched refuse of humanity, scum, I hate you and I spit you out. Rat with two legs, I'm talking to you because an animal, um, because a, a despicable insect, even in spite of being cursed, is compared to you relatively nice. <laughs> Now, like, that's the most punk rock thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and it's by Paquita La Del Barrio, a popular singer in Mexico. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> Escoria de la vida A defesio mal hecho Infrahumano Espectro del infierno Maldita sabandija Cuanto daño me has hecho Lebra ponzoñosa, desecho de la vida, de 
odio y te desprecio. Rata de dos patas, te estoy hablando a ti. ¿Por qué un bicho rastrero, aún siendo más maldito, ha parado contigo? Se queda muy chiquito. Maldita sanguijuela. Maldita cucaracha. Que infectas donde digas. Que hieras y que matas. de dos patas uh, aquí está la del barrio two-legged rat two-legged rat thank you Mark Rebo thank you yeah. 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 tomorrow night is the full band for the music at the performing arts center at 8 o'clock I'm Joe Bimber from KUT good night Austin, Texas thank you guys thank you so much Our next Views and Brews is December 12th when David Brown